Hello, my name is Aaron Fisher and I am the Youth Livestock and Equine Specialist in the Department of Animal Science at the University of Tennessee. I am presenting a video study series focused on beef cattle related topics for Skillathon. This particular episode will focus on feedstuffs. We will talk about several common feedstuffs fed to beef cattle and how they are classified, their nutrient analyses, and the difference between feeds on an as-fed basis and a dry matter basis. It might seem strange to start a conversation about feedstuffs with forages. You really cannot talk about beef cattle nutrition in Tennessee without forages. Whether it is grazing or feeding hay, forages are the basis of beef cattle production in Tennessee. There are times, depending on the situation or production cycle, where feedstuffs are needed to fill nutrition gaps. This might be in times of drought or when a heifer has had her first calf. This is a time of extreme nutrition need when she is still growing herself while also nursing a calf for the first time. It is very likely that extra nutrition will be needed for her to remain productive. These situations are where feedstuffs are useful. Feedstuffs can be classified in many different ways. Today, we will focus on classifying for energy, protein, and minerals. Generally, a feedstuff is considered an energy concentrate when it provides at least 70% total digestible nutrients. TDN is a measure of energy status that is used for beef cattle. If you talk about swine or other species, you would typically use a different energy value. A feedstuff is generally considered a protein supplement when it provides at least 20% crude protein. Crude protein is a measure of the protein status of a given feedstuff. A mineral supplement is one that obviously provides minerals. There are many different minerals needed by beef cattle and many different types of mineral supplements. It is very common for beef cattle to be fed a complete mineral, which means that it supplies all minerals needed in one mixture. Today we will focus on simple mineral sources. A more detailed discussion of minerals will come in a later episode. Before comparing feedstuffs, it is imperative to understand the difference between dry matter basis and as fed basis. The difference in each basis is the presence of water. Because water levels can vary among feedstuffs, you cannot compare nutrient levels or even price of the feedstuffs unless water is removed from the equation. This would be like comparing apples and oranges. You must get each feedstuff on a dry matter basis so you are comparing apples to apples. An as-fed basis is feedstuffs as they are fed with water present. A dry matter basis is feedstuffs without water present. Just like you have always heard, math is important in everything you do, even beef cattle nutrition. Going from an as-fed basis to a dry matter basis is actually pretty simple. You just use this formula. Nutrient level on as-fed basis divided by percent dry matter divided by 100. If we use corn as an example, it has 7.5% crude protein on an as-fed basis and has 86% dry matter. If you plug those values into the formula, it would be 7.5 divided by 86 divided by 100 in parentheses. By working the problem starting with the parentheses first, you end up with 7.5 divided by 0 0.86, which equals 8.7. Thus, in this example, our corn is 8.7% crude protein on a dry matter basis. When you end up with both values, some people have a hard time remembering which is which. An easy way to remember is the percent value for a specific nutrient will always be larger on a dry matter basis because once the water is removed, that nutrient is a larger percentage of the total. In our corn example, 7.5% is on an as-fed basis and 8.7% is on a dry matter basis. We are now going to highlight several feedstuffs that are commonly fed to beef cattle. 
we will give a brief description including its classification as well as the nutrient analysis on a dry matter basis. If you purchase a feedstuff or a feed mixture, the feed label will always have a nutrient analysis. This could include more nutrients than we will talk about today. We will focus on the most common. Dry matter equals the level of nutrients without water. Crude protein equals the level of protein. Total digestible nutrients equals the level of energy and crude fiber equals the level of fiber. Additionally, you will see a level of minerals like calcium and phosphorus. The first feedstuff is whole shelled corn. Corn is a very popular grain crop grown in the U.S. for multiple industries. It is used in some fashion in all major livestock diets, including humans. Corn is commonly processed into cracked corn, ground corn, steam flaked corn, among many others. It is considered an energy concentrate with 93% TDN and is relatively low in crude protein and crude fiber. Next is corn gluten feed. Corn gluten feed is a byproduct of the corn milling industry. It is considered a protein supplement with almost 24% crude protein and is also high in energy with 85.2% TDN. Distiller's grain is a byproduct of the distilling industry that is also considered a protein supplement with 29.3% crude protein while also being high in energy with 89.1% TDN. Shifting to soybean products, now we will start with whole soybeans. Soybeans are a popular crop grown for multiple industries. They are a protein supplement with over 42% crude protein. Soybeans are also high in energy at 94.4% TDN. Soybean meal is a byproduct of the oil extraction from soybeans. It is a protein supplement with 54.5% crude protein. It is also high in energy with just below 90% TDN and it is relatively low in crude fiber. Due to cost, it is not as commonly fed to beef cattle as it is other species like swine. Soybean hulls are a byproduct of the processing of soybeans and is considered an energy concentrate at 71.4% total digestible nutrients. It is moderate with protein at 12.1% crude protein and pretty high in fiber at 40.1% crude fiber. Next, we will look at three feedstuffs from cotton. First is whole cottonseed. Whole cottonseed is a fiber crop grown obviously for the cotton fiber. Whole cottonseed is a protein supplement at 25% crude protein that is also high in energy at almost 99% TDN and fiber at 28.3% crude fiber. Cottonseed meal is a protein supplement at over 45% crude protein that is a byproduct of cotton ginning. It is also high in energy at 78% total digestible nutrients and moderate in fiber with 13.8% crude fiber. The last feedstuff today is cottonseed hulls. Cottonseed hulls are a byproduct of the cotton dehulling process. Cottonseed hulls are pretty low in protein at 4.4% crude protein and moderate in energy at 52.2% total digestible nutrients. They are considered an excellent roughage fiber source at 47.8% crude fiber. We will finish up with a few mineral supplements. First is white salt. White salt is a common mineral supplement fed to beef cattle and is a source of sodium and chloride. There are no other minerals supplied by white salt. Trace mineralized salt is basically salt that has some trace minerals added to it. An example of a trace mineral added is iron. Trace mineralized salt 
is commonly fed to cattle and does provide a low level of trace minerals. Limestone is a mineral supplement that is commonly added to beef cattle diets to increase the calcium level in the feed mixture. We will end up with urea. Urea is a source of non-protein nitrogen. It can be used by ruminants as a source of protein as the microorganisms in the rumen of the animal can turn urea into microbial protein that can be used by the animal. So it is really not a protein but can be turned into a usable form of protein by rumen microorganisms. Examples of ruminants include cattle, sheep, and goats. That wraps up our discussion of common feedstuffs for beef cattle. Please recognize that there are many more feedstuffs that are fed to beef cattle, as well as more types of nutrients than what we discussed today. I wish you the best of luck as you progress through your beef cattle project. Please let me know if I can ever be of assistance. Thank you and have a great day.